Take any city folk, and in two weeks, they would most certainly die in the desert. Hello, we are broadcasted from in the basement at an undisclosed location. <laughs> While most folks see the desert as a barren wasteland of dry sand and dirt, where the temperature never drops below 100 degrees, the truth is, it can get cold out there. In fact, it is not uncommon for desert climates to drop below freezing at night. Too many people believe you should focus on conserving your water when you get lost in a desert. But it's actually your sweat that you should be worried about. Rather than try and hold on to your last drop from the canteen, focus your efforts on maintaining a body temperature up and keeping your skin out of the sun. Build a shelter in the shade that will allow the breeze to flow in. Do not wander around aimlessly in the sun. With the sun bearing down on you, it might seem like a good idea to start peeling your clothes off. But this could be disastrous. Exposing your skin to the sunlight will lead to sunburn and hasten dehydration. Instead, you'll want to cover as much skin as possible and keep it away from direct heat. One of the biggest threats in the desert is actually flash flooding. Flash flooding? Ditches, arroyos, and canyons can fill very quickly with water and can cover you before you realize what's happening. In this side of the world, drowning actually kills more people in the desert than dehydration. Keep to the high ground and avoid any place that could spell doom during a torrential downpour. In the east side of the world, camels carry heavy loads, provide nutrition in the form of milk and meat, and can travel for miles with little water in the desert. Any Bedouin would gladly admit camels are worth more than gold in the desert. For Bedouins, the landmarks are on a grander scale. Turn towards the rising sun at the mountain. Walk for five days in the oasis is by a big rock. Use the stars and other landmarks such as large trees and memorable sand dunes to find your way. The sun rises from the east and sets on the west. It helps to guide you during the day and the stars are available to navigate at night. Stay put during the day when temperatures are too high and at night, the stars guide you along. When it comes to the stars, Ursa Major, the Great Bear, directs travelers to Polaris, the Northern Star. Alternatively, if Ursa Major is below the horizon, the constellation Cassiopeia will also point you to Polaris. Instead of compasses, Bedouins use sand dunes that were shaped by the wind, which could provide valuable directions. Sand dunes form at 90 degrees to the prevailing wind. So if the prevailing wind is from the east, the dunes will run north to south. The desert is a tough place to live. For generations, people survived through sweltering summers by managing to eke out limited and hidden food, water, and shelter. In the United Arab Emirates, the crescent-shaped Barkhan dunes form in areas where there is less sand, usually on gravel plains. The horns of these will point away from the prevailing wind, so if you know that the wind predominantly comes from the east, East, the horns will point west. Dune formation is controlled by a combination of wind strength and direction, as well as sediment supply. Although astrolabes, the ancient instrument used by astronomers, were developed in the Middle Islamic world and were widely used to establish the direction of Mecca, there are scarcely any of those used by the Bedouin these days. The Bedou don't use any navigational aids as we know them is simply know the terrain so well that it is all inside of their heads. Nowadays, we have Google Earth, GPS, maps, and compasses, but being able to orient yourself using a landscape, the sun, moon, and stars is still critical for them. Take any Bedouin, and in two weeks, they will survive in the city. They will figure out the grocery store, the toilet, the toaster, and the shower. They understand community and respect travelers. They are helpful. For any day, their very life can depend on a stranger's assistance. Travel to these places, and you will find the most astonishing hospitality you will ever find.
Now take any city folk, and in two weeks, they would most certainly die in the desert. There is no grocery store, no toaster, toilet, no easily available water. Yet, these people refer to the Bedouins as backwards. You are enlightened. We have little community. We do not know our neighbors, and people sleep on subway vents in the freezing cold. We are detached from nature, the land, and our own sense of community. We are the ones that are truly poor, myself included.